That's what makes it such a great game. It's just the excitement of it, and there's nothing like winning. I think the thing that really gets to you is the competition. It's that personal pride of beating the other guy. The competition starts right here. You know, when you spend $2 million for a horse, or if you spend $10,000 and that's all you can afford, then that's, you're going to be very competitive. You can't change leads. Come on. Come on. We basically are in the gambling business, and we don't like to admit it. He always covers like that. He's like a machine. He comes in, makes a lot of noise. It's one jump, reads the mare. He's a big hero. He's everybody's hero. Hey, this is the future of racing. It's a bunch of broke guys getting together and buying a racehorse at work. Right? Yeah. And they're off in the 135th Belmont Stakes. You need the villain, you need the hero. I was the villain that day. Belmont Park, New York, where horse racing's greatest prize is run, the final leg of the Triple Crown, a feat so difficult it hasn't been accomplished in 25 years. In fact, the legendary secretariat here won the Belmont Stakes 30 years ago in a record time that still stands today. Hello, I'm Forrest Sawyer. We've all enjoyed the beauty and power of thoroughbreds. They love to run. But behind that love is extraordinary drama the high-stakes world of horse racing, where fortunes can be made literally in seconds. We spent a year in this world, from the auctions to the betting windows, from the pastures to the racetrack. Imagine billions of dollars riding on 1,000-pound horses with legs as fragile as glass. This is a world like no other. You're about to go inside the race for the Triple Crown. Once a year, Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky, turns into horse racing's center of the universe. One thing's for sure, it is going to stay nice and mild out there. 35,000 thoroughbreds are born in the U.S. every year. But fewer than 20 will end up here. Three-year-olds, as fragile as they are powerful, primed for this race by trainers who have worked with them day and night, trying to build a champion. Only one will win the run for the roses and the million dollar prize. Jorge Chavez and Monarcos have won the Kentucky Derby. I think the thing that really gets to you is the competition. When it gets right down to it, it's, it's that personal pride of beating the other guy uh, that fuels the fire. What we got to go through to get here, this, play, this race should be $5 million at the least. The Kentucky Derby has been called the most exciting two minutes in sports, and it's the first stop on the road to the Triple Crown. Three races over five weeks, the holy grail of thoroughbred racing. This is the tale of insiders and outsiders who play for money, glory, and their hearts. And it's the story of an unforgettable year in horse racing. Are we about to witness history being made? When that elusive Triple Crown dream was only seconds away. Trainer Wayne Lucas has won the Derby four times. Bob Baffert has won three. Our emblem to win the Kentucky Derby, trained by the Ebonian Bob Dafford. They are the ultimate Derby insiders. It is Heavenly Kevin holding on to the lead. Tom Turning Durkin back. announces all Triple Crown races. Wayne Lucas is, you know, this driven, like, get up 3 o'clock in the morning, type A, uh, personality, a trainer, driven for success. What we try to do each day is work on the weaknesses of the horse. We play to their strengths, but we train to their weaknesses. And Bob Effort's certainly very successful, but, you know, he'll show up at 9.30 in the morning and orange you and say, hey, how you doing? And he's not type A. <laughs> Every horse is different. All my derby winners, completely, totally different horses. You got to find his style, and then you'll know and deal with it. Don't change it. Every time I go to change a horse's style, I get in trouble. Bob Baffert's stellar career in racing is the stuff of boyhood dreams. I started riding horse when I was like nine, ten years old. And I'd go with my father everywhere. I was his shadow. He would have loved to have trained horses on a full-time basis, but he's trying to raise seven kids and do his business. So I'm actually living out his dreams. 
Baffert had his first shot at the big time in 1996 when he came to the Derby with a horse called Cavanier. Here's the finish! A two-time to fall! Lucas's horse beat Baffert's by just a nose, and Baffert has never gotten over it. D. Wayne Lucas and Grindstone, congratulations. That had to be the worst loss of my, my life. I had a picture of Cavanier getting beat by Grindstone, the photo, in my office here in Kentucky. And I just kept it up there just to keep me humble. And when I saw that, it made me like, said, I've got to win this derby. It takes me the rest of my life. In fact, it only took one year. In 1997, Baffert beat Lucas, winning his first Kentucky Derby with Silver Charm. And Thoroughbred Racing's greatest rivalry began. Between them, Baffert and Lucas have won six out of the last eight derbies. Kentucky Derby is the only race that once you win it once, you want to win it again. Once you taste that, once you've been there, you want to get back. This year, Bob Baffert has the horse of a lifetime, the fast and gorgeous Vindication. This, he says, is his triple crown horse. Look at him. Like a black Ferrari. But this year, a Kentucky Derby outsider plans to beat both Lucas and Baffert. I like to uh, compete. I like to win. Bobby Frankel is also a top trainer. In 2002, he had the highest earnings in races. His horses won more than $17 million, but he has never won the Kentucky Derby. Frankel is a city boy from Brooklyn, New York. I got into the business of gambling, to be honest with you. When I was a kid, I used to go to the races, and, uh, well, I walked horses for a little while, and then uh, some idiot gave me a horse to train for him that I didn't have a clue what I was doing. But he sure knows what he's doing now. And this year, Bobby Frankel has his own dream horse. Empire maker, a Kentucky aristocrat, a son of champions, owned by a Saudi prince. He's the best prospect I've had for a three-year-old to going in the race, you know, so. He's always, from day one, acted like a nice horse. Plus, the pedigree has influences your opinion of him. And there's always another type of trainer on the road to the Kentucky Derby, the real outsider, an upstart challenger in the sport of kings, with odds so long, no one pays any attention at all. Barkley Tagg has spent his entire career far from places like Churchill Downs. I just, I did it the wrong way. I should have gone and gotten a job with a big shot trainer and just stayed with him for 15 years or something until I got a string, but I didn't. I just did it the hard way. It was probably not the brightest thing to do. <laughs> but now, after 32 years training horses, Tagg has a derby candidate a chestnut New York bread called Funny Side. Never planned to come unless I had something of this caliber to bring. So. One of these four trainers will win the Kentucky Derby. And on the way there, an extraordinary year in horse racing will unfold. Ambition, passion, and luck will all play a part. When we come back from the landed gentry of Kentucky to internet millionaires, how the high rollers of thoroughbred racing go shopping for superstars when thoroughbred, stable to stardom, continues.